Hello friends, welcome to Physio Elearn. I am Dr. Varun and in this video we are going to discuss 10 short answer questions for 4th year BPTH cardiovascular respiratory physiotherapy subject and stay tuned and in subsequent videos I am going to post more short answer questions and these questions I have taken from MUHS past question papers and other university question papers also so if you have not liked and subscribe my channel kindly like and subscribe my channel so let's get started so the first question is describe two positive expiratory pressure devices so the positive expiratory pressure devices can be broadly classified into oscillating pep devices and pep mask oscillating pep devices these devices combine an oscillation of air within the airways during expiration and variable positive expiratory pressure so they combine the oscillation of air within the airways during the expiration and variable positive expiratory pressure so there there, there are uh, devices like flutter acapella rc cornet quack so in here in this uh, video we are going to discuss about flutter and the other device that is the pep mask so the flutter is a small portable device it is a pipe shaped as you can see in the image uh, with the single opening at the mouthpiece and series of small outlet holes at the top of the bowl the bowl contains the high density stainless steel ball enclosed in a cone during the expiration the movement of the ball along the surface of the cone creates positive expiratory pressure and oscillatory vibration of the air within the airways so there is a com com combination of positive expiratory pressure and oscillation of air inside the airways now it is recommended in supine or sitting position or any position in which the effective oscillation is maintained patient is asked to inhale through nose slowly breath hold for 3 to 5 seconds and exhale at slightly faster rate than normal duration is as tolerated by the patient so this is about flutter now pep mask pep mask the apparatus consists of the face mask and one way valve to which the expiratory resistance can be attached pressure should be maintained between 10 to 20 centimeters of h2o which is man monitored by a manometer so the pressure of the pep mask should be between 10 to 20 centimeters of h2o during expiration the position of the patient is sitting leaning forward with elbow supported on the table and holding the mask firmly on the nose and the mouth while breathing at the tidal volume with slightly active expiration for 6 to 10 breaths the uses of uh, positive expiratory pressure devices is to clear secretions from the lungs in the patient with COPD, cystic fibrosis etc and also you can see at the end of every answer when I conclude there is the reference so this um, answer I have taken from physiotherapy for respiratory and cardiac condition fourth edition prior and prasad and also the page number you can see okay so going on moving on to the second question which was asked in MUHS paper diaphragmatic breathing exercises now diaphragmatic breathing exercise is designed to improve efficiency of ventilation decrease the work of breathing increase the excursion of the diaphragm and improve the gas exchange and oxygenation so I repeat it is improve it is designed to improve the efficiency of ventilation decrease the work of breathing increase the excursion of the diaphragm and to improve the gas exchange and oxygenation so this is very important also it is used during postural drainage to mobilize lung secretions position of the patient is semi forward as you can see in the picture instruct the patient to relax the accessory muscles physiotherapist will place one hand on the rectus abdominis just below the anterior costal margin ask the patient to breathe in slowly and deeply through nose with a relaxed shoulder and quiet upper chest allowing the abdomen to rise slightly then ask the patient to relax and exhale through mouth 
so this is about diaphragmatic breathing exercises references therapeutic exercise fifth edition kissner and the page number next question question number 3 write radiological finding of emphysema so following are the radiological findings of emphysema over inflation of the lungs flattening of the diaphragm dome apparently small heart and decreased ct ratio tibular heart increased retrosternal translucency seen in the lateral view widely spaced ribs pruning of the peripheral vessels so all six radiological findings if you write you will definitely get 3 marks in 3 marks saq so i repeat over inflation of the lungs flattening of the diaphragm dome of the diaphragm small apparently small and decreased ct ratio cardiothoracic ratio or tubular heart increased retrosternal translucency in the lateral view widely spaced ribs or increased spaces between the ribs and pruning of the peripheral vessels reference you can see the next question right precautions and contraindications of postural drainage in a neonate so head down tip should never be used in neonates with raised intracranial pressure or preterm babies because of the risk of periventricular hemorrhage head down tip should be avoided in neonates with abdominal distension as it places diaphragm at mechanical at disadvantage and head down tip will further aggravate the situation third in children with dietary deficiencies liver disease bone mineral deficiency example red kids and coagulopathies manual techniques should be applied with caution manual techniques may not be appropriate in extremely preterm infants fifth and last point infants and children are unable to tolerate lengthy and vigorous sessions so short and frequent sessions should be given so what uh, contraindication and precautions for postural drainage in neonate head down tip should never be given in the patient with uh, in raised intracranial pressure or preterm babies because there is a risk of periventricular hemorrhage again head down and tip should be avoided in neonates with abdominal distension at it puts the diaphragm at at a mechanical disadvantage then children with dietary deficiencies of liver bone mineral defici def deficiency coagulopathies manual techniques should be uh, manual techniques like percussion vibration should be applied with caution then manual techniques may not be appropriate in extremely preterm infants then infants with children are unable to tolerate lengthy or vigorous sessions so short and frequent sessions should be given next question number 5 write any six contraindication for postural drainage so severe hemoptysis untreated conditions like severe pulmonary edema congestive cardiac failure large pleural effusion pulmonary embolism pneumothorax cardiovascular instability cardiac arrhythmias severe hypertension hypotension recent mi or unstable angina question number 6 write two types of inspiratory muscle training so two devices involved in inspiratory muscle training are a flow dependent device and pressure threshold device now flow dependent device training you uh, have to set a resistance with size of various inspiratory orifices but the load can be lessened by the patient taking slow breaths to reduce the turbulence these devices are less likely to produce straining effect and are best used for desensitization of breathlessness so flow dependent device are less likely to produce straining effect and are best used for desensitization of breathlessness second is pressure threshold device incorporates it incorporates spring loaded one way valve which open to permit air flow only when the preset inspiratory pressure is achieved by the patient this obliges the patient to generate set inspiratory force with every breath and is able to create a training effect so these are the two ways which can achieve the training 
ओके फ्लो डिपेंडेंट डिवाइस एंड प्रेशर थ्रेश डिवाइस थ्री स्पेशल टेस्ट फॉर आर्टेरियल इनसफिशियंसी सो थ्री स्पेशल टेस्ट आर रूबर ऑफ डिपेंडेंसी क्लॉटिकेशन टेस्ट एंड एंगल ब्रेकल इंडेक्स फर्स्ट रूबर ऑफ डिपेंडेंसी टेस्ट पेशेंट इज पोजिशन इन सुपाइन एंड द कलर ऑफ बोथ द फीट इज एग्जामिन द एफेक्टेड लिम इज एलिवेटेड फॉर सेवरल सेकेंड एंड लोअर्ड बैक टू द ओरिजिनल पोजिशन द टाइम इज रिकॉर्डेड फॉर कलर ऑफ द टेस्टेड फूड टू मैच द स्टेशनरी फूड If the arterial disease is present, then it may take longer than twenty to thirty seconds for the color to return, and usually it will be bright red. Okay, the second claudication test, one of the earliest sign of the arterial disease is intermittent claudication. The patient begins to ambulate using a treadmill or an unobstructed level surface. The claudication test is recorded as a time. or the distance at which the painful symptoms occur ankle brachial index the ratio of upper extremity systolic bp and lower extremity systolic bp is called as ankle brachial index normal value is 1 or slightly higher so the three tests are ruber of dependency claudication test and ankle brachial index question number 8 acapella and its uses Acapella is a type of oscillating positive expiratory pressure device which uses counterweighted plug and magnet to create air flow oscillation. So acapella is using counterweighted plug and magnet to create air flow oscillations. An oscillation of the air within the airway during the expiration and variable positive expiratory pressure. So acapella creates oscillation of a of the air within the airways during the expiration and variable positive expiratory pressure a capella used to is is used to clear the secretion from the airways in condition like copd bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis etc question number 9 enlist the risk factors of coronary artery disease so age getting older increases your risk of damage and narrowed arteries gender or sex men are generally at a greater risk of coronary artery disease however the risk for women increases after menopause family history a family history of heart disease is associated with higher risk of coronary artery disease the risk is highest if your father or brother was diagnosed with heart disease before the age of 55 or if your mother or sister is developed before the age of 65 smoking smoking people who smoke have significantly higher risk of heart disease exposure others to your second hand smoke also increases their risk of coronary artery disease high blood pressure uncontrolled high blood pressure can result in hardening and thickening of your arteries narrowing the channel through which blood can flow high blood cholesterol levels high levels of cholesterol in the blood can increase the risk of formation of plaques and atherosclerosis high cholesterol can be caused by high level of low density procholesterol known as bad cholesterol a low level of high density lipoprotein that is hdl cholesterol known as good cholesterol can also contribute to development of atherosclerosis diabetes diabetes associated with an increased risk of coronary artery disease overweight or obesity excess weight typically worsens the risk factors physical activity lack of exercise is also associated with coronary artery disease and some of its risk factors as well high stress unrelieved stress may be may cause damage to the arteries so these are the risk factors for coronary artery disease the first three the age gender and family history are non modifiable others are modifiable risk factors of coronary artery disease goals of management in restrictive lung disease so this is the 10th and the last question for today's video so goals of management of restrictive lung disease the first goal is to increase the lung volume or to maintain the available lung volume by prescribing appropriate inspiratory breathing exercises 
Second is to manage the breathlessness by prescribing appropriate energy conservation techniques or dyspnea relieving position. To maintain adequate bronchial hygiene by appropriate airway clearance technique. Fourth, to maintain and increase aerobic capacity by prescribing aerobic exercises. Last, to maintain mobility of the ribcage by giving appropriate thoracic mobility exercises. So here we come to an end of this video. I hope all 10 most likely questions uh, uh, we have covered and in subsequent video I will be covering more uh, short answer questions. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, see you soon. Thanks.